Hi everyone, this is Fahid. I am a master's student in the Department of Mechanical Engineering at Chanam National University. Today I am going to briefly present the paper, Influence of External Resistance on Electrogenesis, Methanogenesis, and Anoprokaryotic Communities in Microbial Fuel Cells. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell for more videos. So, let's start. I will discuss about the contents of this paper in the following order, Introduction, Research Background, Materials and Methods, Results followed by Discussion and Finally Conclusion. Introduction the external resistance of microbial fuel cells regulates both the anode availability as an electron acceptor and the electron flux through the circuit. This research paper evaluates the effects of external resistance on MFCs using acetate or glucose. The average current densities range from 40.5 mA per meter square to 284.5 mA per meter square for acetate fed MFCs with a corresponding anode potential range of minus 188 to minus 4 mV. For glucose-fed MFCs, the average current densities range from 40.0 mA per meter square to 273.0 mA per meter square, with a corresponding anode potential range of minus 189 to minus 7 mV. Control of external resistance is a simple method for studying bioelectrochemistry and exoelectrogenic ecology in MFCs. The purpose of this study was to evaluate how external resistance affects the anode microbial community electricity production, methane production, and electron flow without energy input from potentiostats. Let us continue with the research background. The bioanode is a crucial component in bioelectrochemical systems which is composed of an anode biofilm and a conductive electrode. The complexity of anode biofilms makes it hard to elucidate electrochemical mechanisms at the bioanode. A precise understanding of exoelectrogenesis and competition in anode biofilms will aid in improving the performance of bioelectrochemical systems. It was recently suggested that external resistance cannot be a valid tool for the improvement of anode biofilm performance because similar levels of maximum power were produced from potentially different anode biofilm communities enriched at different external resistance. To achieve this goal, triplicate anode biofilms were developed at the same external resistance in H-shaped MFCs using glucose or acetate. So I will talk now about the materials and methods part. MFC construction and operation. H-shaped MFCs were constructed with 25.2 cm square of anode and 13.0 cm square of cathode. Electrochemical measurements. Cell voltage was monitored using a multiple data acquisition system. Cathode potential was intermittently measured with a silver and silver chloride reference electrode located about 5 mm from the cathode electrode, and anode potential was calculated by subtracting cathode potential from cell voltage. Chemical analyses. Liquid samples were filtered with a syringe filter and the soluble chemical oxygen demand was measured using the colorimetric method. DNA extraction and PCR. Anode electrode samples were sliced with sterilized scissors at the end of each batch in an anaerobic chamber for isolation of genomic DNA. DNA was extracted with the PowerSoil DNA isolation kit according to the manufacturer's instructions. Community analysis. Denaturing gradient gel electrophoresis was performed using the Decode Universal Mutation Detection System for bacterial community analysis. PCR amplicons mixed with a loading die were loaded onto 8% polyacrylamide gels containing a gradient of denaturant ranging from 30 to 60%. QPCR, quantification of Geobactericii was performed with the primer set GEOBACTERACEAE-494F and GEO-825R. Methanosaceae and methanomicrobials were quantified using primer set MST702F and MST862R and primer set MMB282F and MMB832R. Nucleotide sequence accession numbers. Nucleotide sequences were deposited in the JetBank database. So let us now see the results obtained from this paper. Electrochemistry. Low external resistance allowed high current flow and elevated the anode potential as shown in Table 1. Average currents in the voltage plateau range from 40.5 mA per meter square to 284. 5 mA per meter square for acetate-fed reactors, with a corresponding anode potential range of minus 188 to minus 4 mV. 
For the glucose fed reactors, currents range from 40.0 mA per meter square to 273.0 mA per meter square with a corresponding anode potential range of minus 189 to minus 7 mV. Electron flow and energy recovery. In lower external resistance systems, the total substrate consumption rate was higher due to increased rates of electrogenesis as shown in Table 2. Chemical oxygen demand loss not accounted for in measured current, hydrogen, and methane production and estimated aerobic respiration increase with external resistance. Reaching 74% in acetate-fed control reactors and 64% in glucose-fed control reactors in an open circuit. Biogas production accounted for 14 to 18% of electron loss in glucose-fed reactors but only 0 to 6% of that in acetate-fed reactors. Biogas production. For acetate-fed reactors, total methane production increased as external resistance increased and the current increased as shown in Table 2. Glucose-fed reactors produced 43 to 54 moles methane during stages 1 to 3 and 84 to 92 moles in stages 5 and 6 during which the anode bottles were not washed with each medium change as they had been during stages 1 to 3 as shown in Table 2. External resistance effect on anode prokaryotic communities. Densitometry-based PCA showed that external resistance increasing to 9,800 ohms for both acetate and glucose-fed MFCs changed the anode bacterial community significantly. While continued operation at 970 ohm and a reduction to 150 ohm had little effect on them. Here, Table 3 shows the phylogenetic identification of prominent denaturing gradient gel electrophoresis band. Quantification of three functional groups in anode biofilms, the average cell numbers of Geobacteriaceae were 1.7 into 10 to the power 6 plus minus 5. 8 into 10 to the power 5 cells per centimeter square in acetate fed reactors and 2.5 into 10 to the power 6 plus minus 1.6 into 10 to the power 6 cells per centimeter square in glucose fed reactors. Regardless of the current generation, acetate fed control reactors produced very little methane and had only methanomicrobial cells. The non electrogenic glucose fed control reactors had less methanogenic cells in the anode biofilm but produced amounts of methane similar to those of the closed circuit glucose fed reactors. Electricity production of open circuit acclimated anode biofilms. The open circuit anode potential values of acetate fed control reactors and glucose fed control reactors were initially 50 mV, gradually decreasing to 300 mV at the end of stage 1. In stage 1, acetate was barely consumed in acetate fed control reactors, while nearly all of the glucose added to glucose fed control reactors was converted to an accumulated as acetate. I want to discuss briefly about the results now. External resistance effects on anode community evolution. Our results show that high external resistance affected the exoelectrogenic communities that had been established at 970 ohm. External resistance regulates anode potential, which is equivalent to the anode availability as an electron acceptor. Anode potential influence the competition between exoelectrogenic and non-exoelectrogenic community members, as supported by changes in the MFC performance with respect to electron distribution and in biogas production as shown in Table 2. Anode potential might also influence competition among exoelectrogens, either indirectly through microenvironmental conditions or directly through anode utilization. Anode bacterial ecology the results shows that geobacter-like cell dominance in phosphate-buffered MFCs with the headspace filled with nitrogen. It shows that the initial buffer species might not be an important factor in terms of geobacter dominance in mixed culture BES, in which bicarbonate can be produced by other community members. Methanogenic archaeal ecology. Methanogenesis was not affected by anode potential in glucose-fed reactors. Non-washing of anode chambers might have resulted in higher levels of methanogenesis during stages 5 and 6 in glucose-fed reactors, due to adhered microbial communities on the reactor walls that were not reflected in the qPCR data from anode electrodes. In acetate-fed reactors, the non-washing of the anode chambers did not increase methanogenesis. As the anode potential became higher, the current generation increased and methanogenesis diminished as shown in Table 2. Hydrogenotrophic methanomicrobials were also detected in the systems. E. 
differences between the internal resistances and ohmic resistances were 282 plus minus 84 ohm for acetate fed reactors and 355 plus minus 104 ohm for glucose fed reactors. So let's move on to the conclusion for this paper. Total methane production in acetate fed reactors increased as external resistance increased, suggesting that anode potential might influence the competition for substrates between exoelectrogens and methanogens in acetate fed reactors. An increase of external resistance to 9800 ohm significantly changed the anode bacterial communities for both acetate fed reactors and glucose fed reactors, while operating at 970 ohm and 150 ohm had little effect. Delta proteobacteria and bacteroidetes were the major groups found in anode communities in acetate fed reactors and glucose fed reactors. Beta proteobacteria and gamma proteobacteria were found only in acetate fed reactors. Bacilli were abundant only in glucose fed reactors. The anodomethanogenic communities were dominated by methanosataceae, with significantly lower numbers of methanomicrobials. These results show that external resistance affects not only the anode potential and current generation but also the anode biofilm community and methanogenesis. Thank you for your attention and if you have any question you can send me an email.